Well, praise God. Um, I'm so grateful that we have the opportunity today to speak with Mike Stevens. Mike, it's a pleasure to have you with us here today. Praise God. Looking forward to having a conversation. I know we spoke yesterday on the mm -hmm. phone for quite a bit, but Mike's here to share his testimony at uh, later this afternoon. And so he's agreed to give us some of his time uh, to, uh, to share a little bit about what God's done in his life and, and uh, the ministry that he has. He's rubbed elbows with everybody from Steve Forbes to Pat Robertson, preached all over the world and revival, evangelist, pastor. So I guess, Mike, if you don't mind, if we could, let's, let's just kind of start at the beginning. Right. You know, how, how did you have your encounter with Jesus? And, and uh, maybe would you tell us about how you met the Lord? Yeah. How, how did you feel called into the ministry? Was there a something that you felt, hey, you know, God's, yeah. God's moving me, God's calling me into yeah. the ministry here? You know, I was, I tell people, I wasn't raised in church. We didn't, we didn't pray in our home. The only time you'd use word, you know, like religion that we would, a part of was Billy Graham would come on TV yeah. twice a year, usually for a week. Yeah. And my dad would watch Billy Graham on TV. That was it. We never crossed the church door. I was raised in a pool hall. Yeah. And so, uh, I didn't know that about you. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, we played, you know, I can the youngest I can remember being in the pool hall with my dad and then growing up. And, yeah. you know, the first time you beat him in snooker, it's a big deal because, right, right. But, uh, you know, and I, we rodeoed, grew up in the rodeo circuit. And, mm -hmm. you know, one of my closest friends growing up, he's like an 18 time world champion steer roper. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so that was the world we, you know, we grew up in. And back then, there was no cowboys that were Christian. I mean, I didn't know one Christian cowboy. You know, the cowboy churches didn't exist. Yeah. And it's kind of a thing now. Yeah. Cowboy churches. Yeah. And, it's, and there's a lot of believers in, in rodeo, but we didn't have that in that day. And uh, then I got in, to, you know, ninth, tenth grade, my, my parents divorced, and I had more freedom in a sense. And, and it was, trying to fill a void. Oh, yeah. And so I got in, you know, the marijuana was big and popular. Sure. And so got involved in that and kind of drifted from the rodeo circuit uh, mm -hmm. into smoking pot and, yeah. and, and you know, the beer bus and everything. And uh, I don't even hardly remember my sophomore year of high school mm. because I was high most of the time. Yes. And, um, and then one day uh, in my junior year, I came to class, I think it was an English class, and I was sober. It was after lunch, and we usually got high. And I came for some reason sober, and I, and I, I didn't remember anything about the class. You know, you don't, that's the bad thing about, uh, for me, like marijuana, is you, you can be sitting like you were, we are today, mm -hmm. and then I'm, how did I get here? When did I get here? How long did I get here? Right, right. And so I didn't remember anything in the class, but it's, but this girl sat behind me, and I thought, man, she's she's good looking, you know. And yeah, sure. I'm going to come to school sober tomorrow, and I started coming to that class, yeah. non high, to talk to her. Praise God. And uh, and there was something different about her. We got to begin to talk. It was Jesus. And but I also had another interest in her, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so I bet you did. That's right. So we we would talk after school, <laughs> you know, and uh, and for about three months, uh, I was asking her questions. You know, she didn't go to the beer bus, she didn't go to the pot parties, mm -hmm. but she was still popular. Uh, and uh, and it intrigued me because you know you grow up in America, you think you're a Christian because I'm an American, I believe in God. Right. You know, I, I think I might have went to Sunday school a couple of times with a friend of mine. I remember, you know, in the Baptist church, they, you know, they give you a little envelope you can put your tithe in or whatever. Right. Yeah. And in Sunday school is when you would give it, right? Yes. <clears throat> and I remember my dad didn't have, uh, he used to give me a dime to put an offering. Yeah. And I had a, he had a quarter. And I remember they brought the offering around, and I put the quarter in and got 15 cents out because I thought, you know, you're only supposed to get a dime. Right, right. And, uh, 
But after three months, it was, it was, you know, the word of God will not return void. Amen. And God was chasing me. Yes. And, uh, and a friend of mine came home from Texas Tech. He was on football scholarship. Mm-hmm. And he had become a Christian. And he and I would get drunk together. Yeah. And I just assumed he was coming home for the weekend. We're going to go out well, and get drunk. Party. And he picks me up and he goes, hey, I want you to meet somebody. And he knows nothing of who's been talking to me. And we end up at this girl's house. Wow. Her brother led him to the Lord in college. Mm. And uh, takes me into the house. And the entire family sat there and shared their testimony, how they came to Christ. Praise God. And I'm just, you know, feeling like a fish out of water. <clears throat> we get ready to leave. And her mother hugs me. And she says, I love you. And I'm praying for you. And we didn't grow up in a home where I love you was said. You just knew it. Yeah. And uh, so <clears throat> that shook me. Mm-hmm. And so that night I went home and I knelt at my bed in my bedroom. Praise God. And I said, you know, Jesus, if you're real yes. and you can make me like her, Amen. I give you my life. Yes. And <clears throat> it was supernatural immediately because after I prayed, uh, I looked up and there was a cross glowing at the head of my bed. Amen. And there was no windows. Yes. You know, it was it was a foggy night too. Yes. That night I remember. And so I went to sleep. I'd wake up. I'd look up. And that cross glowed. Hmm. Amen. And it was a cross. God was. That was the sign. only time that ever happened. Mm-hmm. And so the next day, I knew a Christian read a Bible. And I knew a Christian went to church. So I went to the bookstore, got me a Bible. Sunday morning, went to First mm. Baptist Church. That's where she went. Yeah. Was there for three months, probably. And the Lord said, uh, are you here for me or her? Because he knew. Ooh. Ooh, yes. But he wanted me to know. Yes. And I said, I'm here for you. Praise God. And I started taking my Bible to school, mm. started witnessing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I met, it was March of 75, so I had April and May, right? So my senior year is when I started taking my Bible to school and witnessing the kids and coming into class, passing tracks out. Didn't know anything. I didn't know right. anything. And so some of the kids went to the youth pastor and said, you got to do something about this guy. He said he's embarrassing. He's out of control. Yeah, yeah. he's embarrassing us. He's got his Bible. He's on the steps of the high school. Amen. He's preaching. And I don't remember preaching. I just remember witnessing to people, you know. Sure. And uh, the youth pastor's name was John Glover. Mm -hmm. And John told me years later, I said in my mind, I've been looking for this guy my whole ministry. Wow. And he said, what's his name? And they said, Mike Stevens. Mm -hmm. And so the first day in the Sunday school class, when I went to his Sunday school class, and we introduced, you know, he pulled me aside after Sunday school, said, you want to have lunch Tuesday? Yes. I said, I'd love to, you know. Yeah. And that began a lifelong, he's 81, 82 today. I'm 64, and we still meet. He lives in Cleburne, Texas now, and we meet in Waco. And uh, he discipled me. Hmm. And uh, and I just, you know, I was witnessing before I knew there was a word evangelist. Yeah. Uh, I just it had just God. Na- it was just natural. He changed my life, yeah. you know, and if, if I could turn people on to marijuana, I could turn them on to Jesus. Yeah, I love it. And so I'd go to the pot parties. Mm. You know, I told John, I said, now listen, if I, you know, get busted or I'm not smoking pot, and if I'm at the pool hall, I'm not backslidden yeah. because I would play people in pool. And it was the only way I knew how to evangelize. I said, if you beat me, you know, I'll give you five bucks. Yes. If I beat you, you give me 30 minutes of your time. Yes. Oh, and so I'd get to witness to them, you know, yeah. and then go to the pop parties and and they would see me and they would just like, oh, you know, and and mm-hmm. they would start shaking and try to roll the joint and it's yeah. spilling everywhere. And I would say, here, give it to me. And I would fix it for them and I would put it in their mouth and I would say, you want me to bless it? Yeah. And they would go, oh, man, you could do anything. But that. I said, well, if, if you can't bless it, why are you going to do it? Yes. You That's know? Good. And really not knowing that if I got busted, I could have gone to jail, you know. It was just zealousness without knowledge is dangerous, you know. 
But that's how it all kind of started. 